Well, good morning, Grace Gathering. So glad to see you guys here today. Uh, as you may be able to see behind me, we have a conference going on here at the church this week where leaders from uh, all across the country of different churches have come together uh, and we're talking about uh, pursuing the mission of God. We're talking about making disciples uh, and sharing the gospel. And uh, we're talking about that um, as leaders, but we wanna let you guys know that Leadership Day is coming up as well. And during our Leadership Day, which is October 15th, we're gonna be talking about the same thing that we're talking about with church leaders here today. We're gonna be talking about sharing the gospel. Uh, we'll have a speaker uh, who is doing a lot of work in India, uh, and so we want to invite you to be present for Leadership Conference. It is October 15th uh, from 8.30 in the morning to 2.30 in the afternoon. And there will be an element where uh, we'll actually leave the building and go out and do some prayer walking amongst the city. So uh, I want to encourage you, get signed up for that. You can sign up online at gracegathering.com. Uh, there is a code for Grace Gathering members, Grace, I think it's Grace 100. Um, and uh, you can get uh, signed up for free. There will be childcare. So make sure you get signed up for this quickly so that we can uh, know how many people to account for. So we hope to see you guys there. Uh, that's the only announcement that I have for you guys today. So let's go ahead and prepare our hearts for a time of worship together. Good morning, Grace Gathering. Um, hope you're having a wonderful morning so far. Why don't you stand and worship with us wherever you are as we sing Lord of all the earth. And I invite you as we sing, we're saying, shout his name. Let's fill up the skies, singing with creation this morning. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love you, Lord. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name.
Oh 
As most of you know, we've been planning to plant a church in Haiti for the last several years. We thought it was gonna be in 2020, then it got pushed back, and we thought it was gonna be in 2021. And these postponements were issues outside of our control, but we are ready now. And over this past year, God has provided a Haitian pastor to lead this new church plant, which just confirms that God's timing is always perfect. And so let's listen to Scott and Pastor Patrice as they share more about this vision and even see the land where the vision will be located. So around 10 years ago now, or, or somewhere around there, we took our first trip with Grace Gathering to the country of Haiti with a short-term mission team. And we've been taking teams really for the past 10 years. And then around six years in on that, we just felt like God had more in the country and God wanted us to engage in the country even more. After one of those short-term trips that we went on, I just had this sense that there was more that God wanted to do within us and within the country. So we're just really praying about that, praying about what God would have for us. And I was on a plane one time and I, really, I felt on that plane that God was speaking to me about a city in the northern part of the country that I knew nothing about and had never been to. The city was Cap Haitian and so when I got off the plane, I began to research this city and learn a ton about it through that research. And then as I was researching and just figuring out, okay, should I go there and actually spend time within this city, I was actually at a local coffee shop in Fort Wayne researching flights for a trip to head down there. And while I was researching it, I heard behind me there was a couple that was speaking in Creole which seemed really odd in the city of Fort Wayne to, to hear that behind me. So I, I looked around me, one of them was a guy named Fabio. And so we just had conversation about what it would look like to go into Cap Haitian and figure out what God had. And so we did just that. A few years after that, we launched an organization called Empowered International because we really felt like God had more for the young adults within the country that God could use them to make a real sustainable change throughout the country. So as some of you may know, we have quite a few Haitians that are currently a part of Grace Gathering. And some of these Haitians are connected to a specific village in Haiti near Port-au-Prince. And that's where we met Patrice, who is going to be the pastor of this church plant. And he was invited to come up to Fort Wayne. It was a part of Grace Gathering North for around two months as we began to have relationships and connect with him. Through many conversations, we just felt like God was calling him to lead the church in Haiti, which we're super excited about. So in this area in Capetian, it's called Kafujesi. We don't have a place for the people come to, to worship God. We don't have church. The church is so far from Kafujesi. So that's the reason we pray and God put in our heart to put a church in Kafujesi in Capetian. Sometimes they ask me, Pastor, when, when you come to to put the church, I say, we pray and we hope God will do it. Please keep praying, pray, and God will do everything he wants here in Capitation. So God's been doing some amazing things in the community, but you may be wondering, what do you need the funds for? We've got currently a house being built for Patrice and his family, which will be done very soon. Also, we'll be building a church facility that we put into multiple phases. And the first phase will be a place for leaders to be able to meet and be trained, as well as a place for the community to be able to meet together, a gathering space. As well as, on there in the second phase, we'll have on the top story of the second, or the second story of the property, we'll have a place where people from throughout the country, pastors and leaders and others throughout the country will come and be trained in missional discipleship in order to be able to go back out to where they're at 
and lead and invest in the communities that they're a part of. So in many ways, this facility will be a training center or a resourcing center for all that God wants to do within the country of Haiti. So as you can see, there's so much that God is doing within Cap Haitian in Carrefour Jay-Z. God is moving, God is working, God is using individuals, God is using young adults already in that community. His kingdom is already coming within that community. And this is just, just an opportunity for us to be able to, to really partner with him and do whatever we can to help resource and encourage and strengthen what is already happening in this community. So I hope you'll join me and join us in this. Well, as we walked around the land and talked to both the young adults and people in the community, there is a growing excitement about this church plant beginning this year. And so we're so excited that we can do this together and we look forward to all the ways that God's gonna lead us by His Spirit. Well, good morning. Welcome to our online time. Uh, thanks so much for being with us this morning. My name is Chris Norman, and it's great to be with you online. Today, we conclude our three-part series called Unity Around Mission, and that video we just watched is so inspiring and so encouraging. And as, as we said in the video, after many delays over the last couple of years, um, in fact, we, we marked uh, earlier this year, September 25th today, uh, as the final day that we plant this church in Haiti. However, uh, we have some disappointing news. Over the last several weeks, another burst of unrest has impacted the country. And while myself and many uh, several other of our Grace Gathering leaders were supposed to be there this very day um, in Haiti with the launch of this new church, we have had to postpone once again. Even Pastor Patrice and his family have had difficulty moving from Port-au-Prince to Cap Haitian during the last uh, several weeks. And so we're we're postponing the launch another couple of months. Are we disappointed? Yes. Are we defeated? Not in the slightest. If anything, we're, we're more resolved than we've ever been. This church plant is something that God has been leading us to do for a long time. And we won't give up. And even if we have to wait another couple of months, we will persevere. I don't know if you remember when Jesus was asked, or he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? Or who do you say that I am? And you remember Peter responded by saying, well, well you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And you remember Jesus responded I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. The gates of hell will not overcome the spread of the gospel. The gates of hell will not overcome the advancement of God's kingdom, the multiplication of his church around the world. The kingdom of darkness will not overcome the kingdom of God. There are so many challenges and spiritual strongholds in the country of Haiti, which is one of the most impoverished countries in the world. Yet at the same time, God is at work in the country and the gospel of Jesus is giving people hope there. And God is bringing beauty out of ashes. Just as he brought beauty out of ashes in my life, just as he brought beauty out of ashes in your life, just as he's bringing beauty out of ashes all over the world, including the country of Haiti. Haiti has experienced more brokenness than most, however. Extreme poverty over the last couple of years President assassinated, gangs, natural disasters. 
We're so proud of our brothers and sisters in Haiti who've persevered and our hearts go out to those who have also left due to the extreme conditions. And in case you have not heard this, many of the Haitians as they're coming into the States are coming into Indianapolis and Fort Wayne due to some measure to the cost of living and the employment opportunities. Many of them are finding jobs here. Some of you may know that similar things happened in the early 90s with Burma or Myanmar as many came to, into the States, into Fort Wayne. As a place today that where there is a large contingency of Burmese. Today we have several Burmese churches in Fort Wayne. And Grace Gathering has had a growing relationship over the years with one Burmese church, Burmese Christian Fellowship. It's been such an amazing blessing. And what a blessing that many of these Haitians are now coming even to Grace Gathering East. Even over the last four to six weeks, we've seen dozens of Haitians coming to Grace Gathering East. I want to read a passage of Scripture that explains why there's so much brokenness, why there's so much resistance, and why we've had to delay now once again what God has put on our heart regarding this church plant in Haiti. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6, and let me just read verses 10 through 12. Here's the exhortation. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. You see, our struggle and our battle is not against flesh and blood or just simply in the human realm, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You see, it's really important for us as we're partnering together with what God's doing to know that what we see in the natural realm is not simply all there is to know. There are things going on in the spirit realm that affect the natural realm. And this is what God's communicating to his church in this particular passage and other passage, passages. We want to see beauty turn to ashes with the power of the gospel. And that's what's happening. But we also know there's an enemy and there are spiritual strongholds and principalities in the heavenly realms that are working against God and working against us. As we think about this passage, let me remind you of the context of the book of Ephesians to even understand what the passage is saying in its context. The book of Ephesians is the most general of all the letters on the nature of the church. If we actually go back and read a few passages earlier in the letter, we see the gospel brings unity to people who are divided. We read, for example, in Ephesians 3, 6, this mystery is that through the gospel, and there's the power of the gospel of Jesus, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel. Gentiles being everyone besides Israel. Members together of one body and shares together in the promise in Christ Jesus. The gospel brings everyone together through transformation. Or for example, we read in chapter four, verses one through six. As a prisoner for the Lord, Paul says, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. 
There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who's over all and through all and in all. We are united in Christ. So if we think about this series that we've called Unity Around Mission, we see that the mission is about the gospel, the gospel of Jesus that goes all over the world, changing people's lives, bringing them forgiveness and freedom and bringing people together. Unity is about the love we have for one another and also about the focus, was, the focus we must have together for the advancement of the gospel to see lives changed and his kingdom advanced all over the world. And although we know that the kingdom of God is advancing all over the world, we also know that our enemy is working in the heavenly realms all over the world. We need unity around the mission in our church, in Grace Gathering. We need unity around the mission in our city, greater Fort Wayne, Allen County and beyond. But we also need unity around the mission in our world as well. You see, we stand in unity with believers in our own country. We stand in unity with believers in Haiti. We stand in unity with believers in Ukraine. We stand with unity, in unity with believers in Russia. We stand in unity with believers in Mexico. We stand in unity with believers in Uganda. We stand in unity with believers in Japan. We stand in unity with believers in China. We stand in unity with believers in the UK. We stand in unity with believers all over Europe. We stand in unity with believers in all of South America. We stand in unity with believers in the Middle East. And we stand in unity with believers in Israel. In the midst of brokenness in our world, we are united. We're united around the mission. We're united around the person of Jesus and the mission that he's given us to take the gospel to every person. We are united. And if you think about the people in your life who need Jesus, we cannot be unaware that there is an enemy at work even among us, not only all around the world, but even among us that's working against them and working against us and then within these principalities and powers. Let me read Ephesians 6 again, but also read the rest of what is said in the rest of that chapter, which is this letter about the nature of the church and our commission and our need to take a stand against the enemy and be united. It says this, verses 10 and following, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, you, the church, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, 
with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people everywhere, all across the globe. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. And so as Paul is giving this commission of as we're taking the gospel, that we stand firm against the enemy, that we are unaware of his schemes, that we need to be very conscious and very aware that what's going on in the heavenly realms, both the good and the evil, impacts what's going on in the earthly realm. And so as we close this series, Unity Around Mission, which today I was to be in Haiti with several of our Grace Gathering leaders celebrating the plant there in Haiti. And although it's been delayed once again, here's the message. We will not give up. The victory is ours in Jesus. There will be battles that face us. But whether we're talking about being united together within our own church or within our own city, or we're talking about being united together with believers all over the world, we will never give up. We will persevere because we know in the end, it's by God's spirit. We know in the end, our eternal home is the new heaven and the new earth where all believers everywhere will be together. And so we take our stand today and we take our stand in unity around the mission that God has given us. As long as we have breath here on this earth, we will be united together around the mission that Jesus has given us to take the gospel and to see lives changed both here locally as well as all over the world. And we look forward, the day will come and we are praying it comes soon where the plant will be started in Haiti and we'll celebrate as the, even the building is going up as we speak right now. And so let's just spend just a, a, a few moments together uh, as we close this series and just do some listening prayer. Let's just make sure that our identity is a collective identity with believers all over the world, that we're united together and we're united around the mission that Jesus has given us. And let's just ask, Lord, what are you saying to us? How are you speaking to us? And how do you want us to respond? How can we increase our prayers and increase our unity around the calling that you've made to us here locally as well as to the ends of the earth. So let's just pause for a moment and do some listening prayer and allow the Spirit to speak directly to you.
And so, Lord, we just thank you so much uh, for these last several weeks as we've talked about unity around mission. Um, Lord, how we want to be available, um, even the, in the midst of the relationships around us, as people need Jesus. Lord, help us to increase our prayer focus. Help us to increase our engagement with those around us. Help us increase our partnerships with other ministries and organizations. And Lord, even as we think beyond what's happening here locally to other parts of the world, thank you that you've called us in these partnerships. And Lord, I pray that as we continue to be united with believers all over the world around the mission of the gospel, Lord, that you would protect us. And even as Jesus prayed the the Lord's Prayer and taught his disciples how to pray. At the end, may you protect us. May we not be overcome with evil. And we just thank you that you will deliver us from the enemy. And so we just thank you for your promises and we persevere in you. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, blessings to you and we'll see you next week.